So in this video, we're going to start to really make uh, an actual website. Now we've done the basics of CSS, HTML, some SAS, uh, and it's time to really dig in and start making a website. So I've quickly mocked up this Photoshop um, design for, I'm just going to remake my website just for these videos. So I've got a new logo, new little uh, mascot, uh, the titles here, uh, and then it's kind of going to scroll down. I mean, this is, we want this menu to be um, you know, we should scroll, maybe it reduces up and uh, maybe put some animation on this number six. Um, and then we'll have, say, this guy slide in and maybe just hover around in a kind of pattern constantly. Uh, we'll probably have this text end up typing in. So it like, you know, it's like a typewriter effect as if it's typing. Um, it's like the header, if you will. So this will all kind of slide and animate in. And then you just scroll down. You can imagine if I put it into kind of like a full screen mode. Um, It'll sort of slide down and you'll have, hello, my name is Luke, and then just keep scrolling down. Nice big font, you know, classic modern website appeal. Um, and that, that's kind of where we're going to go with this. Uh, so I've just messed around with Photoshop. I will do tutorials on Photoshop eventually as well, but for now, we'll just keep it to the web. Uh, and then I've made like a contact me page, which is just nice and simple. It's just going off the same website. Um, and then a blog page, which will be, again, just a just a modern, clean, simple look. So we're going to make this whole website in these videos. Uh, we're going to start with this top menu, though, because that's probably one of the most tricky things on the website compared to the rest, which is pretty easy. It will come together really fast. So this is what we're going to create here, this kind of top menu. And as it collapses to mobile, it will go to like a hamburger menu and slide down and things. We'll have to get some JavaScript involved at that point. But... This is what we're going to make. So to get started, uh, you should all by now be um, using DNA Web. So if not, just go to dnaweb.io and download the latest version, which is 1.04 at the moment. Uh, once that's installed, we're just going to create a new folder called test for the minute. And in the header bar, just type DNA Web. And I've gone ahead and actually made this. Uh, the point of this DNA Web and these templates is to aid rapid web development. So at the end of it, you should be able to make websites like this new Angel 6 one in like 10 minutes, just chunking together pieces. So I'll show you the completed uh, top bar, and then we'll go through making it from scratch. So with DNA Web spun up in this test folder, just type in new template fabric.modern1, and just press enter twice. And that'll go ahead and create the whole blank website. And you can see then we've got this uh, title top menu bar. As you scroll down, it shrinks, so it's a nice animation. Um, as you reduce in size, it goes to a hamburger menu. Uh, and then you click on it, and you have the, the menu slide out. So you've got your mobile view, and you can go right the way down, and you know, still got your view. Uh, and then you can scroll back out, um, and you've got your normal menu. So this has all been made, and you can now make use of this uh, inside of the uh, fabric template, uh, which is it's the way you'll work as you go forward, you'll see is you can then just simply start a new web design with a fabric template and you can type in, uh, you know, like say top menu style one, which is what this will be. And it'll inject like a, a style like this. Then you can tweak your icons, your color scheme. Then you could inject a header of a certain style and then a banner of a certain style. And it's going to be like chunking together bits of websites in modern styles. So this is the first part of this kind of theme uh, that's available. So if we did like a live variables, oh, live variables, uh, you'll see we've now got this fabric.topmenu.standard. So if we had a look at that, uh, fabric.topmenu.standard, you can see it's going to dump out this div, if you will, which will automatically style if you're using the fabric engine into this top menu instantly uh, without you having to do anything. Uh, but behind the scenes, it's all just, it's all in the fabric uh, source code that you can see. It's nice and simple and clean. So it doesn't take anything away from the user. Uh, it's still just HTML, CSS, uh, and the JavaScript is in there, but it's nice and easy to see. It's not using any third party libraries. It's not clustered. It's just clean, simple, um, and all works with the whole, the you know, the web template, if you will. So this is what we're, we're gonna be creating. So we're going to now go and we'll make another folder. 
um, and we'll make this a blank fabric template. So start with blank here, make a folder, type DNA web, and then we'll do new template fabric dot blank, which is typically what you'd start with. And that'll create a new blank template with just the, you know, the flat uh, fabric engine ready to go. Uh, then if we go to blank, right click and open with Visual Studio Code, and we'll do the same for the test folder. So we've got the two open. Uh, in fact, we don't need the we don't need the test one open because we're doing it from scratch. So let's just start with the blank one, and we'll go into the HTML. So here's the HTML. So we'll just try header one, test, and save. And you can see we've then got test here. Um, so if we bring that maybe out and across bridge that in, you can see the updates are then live. So the first part of designing uh, the top menu in any kind of HTML CSS is I usually start with the HTML. So we're going to make the HTML in this part here. Um, and as I mentioned in the last few videos, there's, we're going to try and keep this all to the most modern standards. Uh, and typically, uh, just a generic um, group, if you will, as you're constructing your HTML, uh, you'd use divs. Um, and we'll still use divs, but we'll start with um, making use of some new names that you can basically replace divs with uh, that are to help search engines and things to find areas of the website. So a classic one is the navigation, the top menu or the side menu, whatever your main navigation of your website is. So instead of putting like a div, we'll start with nav. And that is basically just a div, just a different name to help search engines to be able to find our navigation area to then offer. Um, like if we go to Google and type say Angel 6, um, and you can see here, these links below are because the search engines managed to find the navigation. So it helps, um, you know, search engines figure out where your pages to your website are and offer nicer layouts. So we'll make it a nav. Um, and then the other thing I also try to do is in HTML, I try to keep the class names, the amount of times you, you type specific classes and try to style, you know, a, a control of you, like this whole top navigation bar to an absolute minimum in HTML. So what I'll do is I'll put a class at the top level and I'll call this top menu standard, which is what we were creating. But because this is now already baked into the fabric engine, uh, if I do that, it'll already style for us. So I'm just gonna call it top menu standard two. Um, and that should be the only class really I need um, in the whole, um, the content inside, if you will. Don't start then trying to style based on things inside. We'll do that in the, the SAS file. Uh, so always think with the HTML, you're gonna try and keep it as minimal as possible in terms of class names and structures. Keep it as simple as possible. So this will be the top navigation menu. And inside here, uh, you'll get used to how to think about these the more you do as well. So I've obviously already got the knowledge and I'm gonna try and explain it, but my natural way of thinking is um, to group things. So. As we look at the menu, we've got an icon over here. Uh, we've got menu over here. And straight away, the icon can be an image um, and the uh, menu can be a list because typically, again, for search engines benefits, if you put your navigation inside of a list item, like an unordered list, it helps. So even though we could style it in many different ways using divs or any other kind of element, it's most common to put your main top navigation inside of a list because it's kind of a list of links, if you will. So the menu items would be uh, an unordered list, and each one would be a list item. Um, each one will have a link inside. So a href, we don't really care right now about what the link is, so we'll just put a, a hash. And inside the link will have the name, so we'll have blog. If we save that, you'll see straight away, there's a single item called blog. Then if we paste one, two, three, we've got blog, YouTube, SolidWorks, for setup contact. So we'll have blog, YouTube, uh, SolidWorks. Now I'm doing mine lowercase just for the style. I quite like the lowercase writing for the new style I'm going with. Uh, Seto and contact. So if I save that, you can see this is the structure. So when you're constructing the HTML initially like this, don't really think too much about how it's appearing here. 
it's more just about the structure. We can restyle this in to look any way we like with CSS. So it really doesn't matter how it ends up coming out here. It's more about just getting the structure right in general. So we've got a container itself first, which is the nav. Uh, so then we can do like a full width background image, if you will, and that'll contain all of this. We'll then need to wrap the, um, the whole thing in a grid. So if you see how I expand here, this fabric engine comes with a grid system so that we can nice and easily add a website inside of this grid. And as we resize, the sections, the columns, resize and alter according to responsiveness. So the source code for all this is in the fabric um, source code. So if you went to HTML fabric, or oh, there's nothing in there really, that's just the sample grid that you see in here. And then SAS fabric, all of the stuff to do with this engine, this grid system, if you will, is in here. Um, and the, the fabric template that I'm making, uh, you can see all the source code. Now I'll explain it at a later date. But to get it going, this has all been done so that you can start with a, a website with a, a grid system ready for you to use. You don't need to really know much more than um, it's now going to contain the grids within this area, if you will. And um, as you go down, they're all, it gives you all these options and you can see the source code nice and easy. And just think of these containers as where you then want to place your content. Um, and in general, you'd have if you want any background to be the 100% width, like as you drag out and some websites have, uh, well, in fact, if we go to Angel 6, take a look here, you've got a full width blue background uh, that just keeps expanding, but the content is within this grid here, this area that you see here. So the initial outline, if you will, the main full width will be our nav item. And then this content that's wrapped inside this grid there will be called the wrapper, if you will. Um, so that it can stay, you know, the width of uh, the page. So if we go back to here, this nav would have a background that's going to span the whole width. And then in order to wrap our image in that, we're going to just chuck a div inside of here and we'll move the menu items inside. Uh, so this div will then become the wrapper that will stay within the grid's width. So we'll fix that to the same width as the grid. And then inside there, we've now got the menu items. We also then want an image. So because the image is on the left and it lays out left to right by default, to make it easier for the CSS, we will put the image first. So we'll just call this logo. Uh, and we'll just type in image source equals uh, assets. Images uh, logo flat dot PNG and save that. And by default, images are due to the fabric um, template. Again, we make images 100% width by default. Uh, the one thing we will do is just quickly nick the already existing um, image I've got from the fabric modern one template. So we've just gone into the, the first one we created with the fabric.modern one template, web root assets, oh, web root assets, images, and then this is this logo. So we're just pinching that. We're gonna chuck it inside of our new blank one in the assets and dump an image in here. And then if we refresh this, we should see that image. Um, so you can put any image. This is where you'd simply locate your, you know, the logo you want for here now. And then we've got the list. So we've got the top navigation. Uh, we have the uh, image with the link in there. Uh, we have the menu items. Uh, and then the one other thing we will want, um, which will use some JavaScript to make fully work, but for now we'll chuck it in, is when this website goes small, we want the hamburger menu. The Which by that I mean, you know, this type of thing here, this little hamburger menu. So we'll place that in HTML, so it's already there. Uh, so we'll call this menu icon, I guess. And we'll just make this uh, div. Uh, and do we want a menu icon? The one thing we'll do here, in fact, no, you don't need to do a class there. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll put a class here just to make it a bit easier to select 
um, inside. So I know I don't want to put many classes. I could remove it. But for now, we'll just chuck this one extra class in just to make it quick and easy to select that um, icon. And again, you'll see this come together as we start styling the CSS. Uh, inside that div, we will chuck another link because it's a clickable link, if you will. Um, and also, the again, the fabric template system has got icons built in. So this is what this icon cheat sheet is. So if we were to go to here and put forward slash icon dash cheat sheet, oh, check sheet, cheat sheet, uh, we see all these icons. Uh, and these icons are the ion, which is a bunch of icons, like loads of icons you can scroll down in a font file. And they are MIT licensed, which is open source like everything I'm doing at the moment. So it was a good fit, just gives you loads of icons you can make use of that are uh, vector, so they scale as large as you want, and they're very small, uh, with them being you know vector icons. So this is already baked into the fabric um, template system, if you will. And again, you can take a look at it by just looking at the source code in the SAS folder. So you can see fonts, you've got ion fonts, you've got all the original um, links to you know the guy that made this and all the source code. Um, so again, you can check that out. But it's just basically an icon font file, fairly standard thing. Um, so you can make use of that, and we'll do that for the uh, hamburger menu, if you will, the icon, because they have one in that icon list. So if you took a look at that cheat sheet, you'd find that there is one in, and to make use of it, you do an I. Um, so you open and close this I, um, and then in here you simply add a class, and the class for that is uh, ion um, nav icon. Uh, round, I think it is. And if we save, you can see there, this is the, the little icon. Um, so that's, again, ignore how it's all just dumping in. We're simply getting the HTML ready. Uh, so we have now, I think, here, basically this is the HTML structure I think we'll play with. And you don't necessarily always just make this in one go, and you simply then move to CSS. There'd be a lot of going back and forward. You'd, you'd make it as clean as you can, then you start styling with CSS, then you'll find out that you you know, might need to move this up or down, or you might need an extra div or things. But because I've just made this, I know this is going to be a usable structure. But all you're trying to think in general as you're making this at first is you look at something and you go like here that you've got um, a menu at the top. So you know you've got an icon and a logo area, if you will. Then you've got your main links, so you'd make a link there. Um, and then you potentially think as you're doing it, you go to mobile and you see you get this other icon. So you start building up. And the more you do this, as we build the whole website, you'll get a feel for what we're doing. So right now, you'll kind of just be following along and you're not sure why you've made these choices. Uh, but until you do it enough times and you'll, you'll realize why, that'll naturally come. So don't worry too much if you don't fully get the choices we've made here uh, because you just you just won't until you've done it a few times. So... Um, all you can think of is divs are kind of generic groups as you, you jump down. And as you start applying styles to divs, you'll get a feel for, you just think of them as kind of boxed areas. Like this could be a div around the button. This could be another div. Um, and then you simply style it. So this divs 50% um, and left aligned, and this is 50% and right aligned and, and things like that. So you'll, you'll get the feel as you do more styling of what to do. But majority of it is basically a bunch of divs that you style. So you've got a, a nav, which is basically a div just with the nav name, another div, another div. It's just basically a bunch of, of sectional areas that you, you're styling. So we'll start with this now. And the only real key thing we have to start with is this top menu standard two class that we've given. So to start styling, let's jump into the style.css. Start a class, which is basically starts with a dot and then top menu standard two is the name. So now we're in the style.sass. And I usually check to make sure uh, I've actually got the the area selected first. Start with simply typing display none, which will completely hide it. And if you save and it goes, you know you've managed to select that item. And I've done the video on CSS and SAS, which shows you how you select all these things. So if you're unsure, you can watch that previous video. So now we know we're happy that we've got this top menu standard. And we know that initially, We've got the div, which is the whole background that we're talking about. So we'll start styling that by, um, we will 
because this top menu is going to stick to the top and we're going to scroll down, um, this content like here wants to stay underneath. So if we first make, um, I guess we can make the, um, the position of this whole div. Uh, so if we do position, there's one item called fixed. And if we save, you'll see now it's kind of jumped and sat above everything else. Uh, and as you scroll, everything's like behind it. So fixed is, as it states, it's never moves regardless of the page scroll. And that's kind of how we want the menu to be. So we'll do um, fixed position. And again, by default, it's sticking to the top. But if we type in top zero to force it to the very top, you'll notice it didn't necessarily start at the top. So the top position was pushed down. So we'll explicitly state it's a fixed position and it starts at the top. Um, then you'll also notice that if we put a background color on, uh, so we will want to uh, start with the main background color. And these colors I'm going to pull in from the fabric um, color schemes. So we have a palette here, which you can edit to suit your colors. Um, and these are, again, I spoke about this in a previous video, but we have really like a main dark color, two main highlight colors, then two main shades of the highlight colors, and then two generic bright and dull colors. And that should be enough throughout the whole website for majority of all things. So if you're gonna change this theme, generally keep it that these two are your standard, um, kind of usually used for text, very, uh, usually white and black that you need for the general site. Then you have a kind of your themed dark background, your theme two bright colors, and your theme two dark colors that are matching those bright colors. So like two and four pair up, three and five pair up. That's how I've kind of worked this theme system in. So we're gonna keep the standards because it's already themed for the right color for me. And I'm gonna make the background of this menu the color one, which is the background of this already. So we'll do background uh, color one and save. And now you can see, if we did a quick uh, border one pixel solid red, you'll see now we've fixed it to the top. By default, the width of this is no longer 100%. The default is now simply the size it needs to be. So because we want the top menu to be all the way across, uh, we then want to force the width to be um, 100%. So max width. So we'll do width 100%. And um, we'll force the width back out to 100%. Then we have, um, get rid of that border now we can see that. Uh, we also want to change the standard color of the these icons, the you know, the general color of anything in the nav uh, to the standard plain color here, which is white, just color six. So we'll say text, is general bright color, color six. And you'll see all that's done really has made the, the dots white because these are all links. So everything else is kind of already styled with a link. But either way, if we were to change anything or add anything, we want the top menu to generally be, um, you know, the white color. So we'll start with that. Also, even though everything's appearing below the menu right now, if we were to style things differently, like this fabric sample grid, say, say just for whatever reason, some, you know, the user or the developer of the page decides to go, um, oh, I want this to be uh, on a higher level because they're trying to arrange their CSS. They might chuck it on a Z index of three, um, which hasn't seemed to have actually worked. Uh, interesting. <laughs> oh, there we go. So you can see here, I've chucked in this Z index on, um, oh, it's because I chucked it on this specific part. And you can see that it's showing above uh, the menu by, you know, things that are, you know, users can end up styling a Z index. And the Z index is the 3D layer. So if you think of the web page as every element is stacked one on top of the other coming out towards the screen, when nothing's specified, um, then the Z index is all zero but users can change the Z index. So to be sure that our menu always stays on top, we'll basically uh, make sure menu stays above everything else. 
And typically a safe Z index um, is like a thousand. You're talking, you know, when you style, you typically do Z index one, two, ten, maybe a hundred. Um, but keeping it a thousand simply keeps the top menu above everything else. So, so long as you, you style it correctly, you shouldn't have any issues there. Um, so that's the start. Uh, we'll come back to other bits after. Uh, we now want to, let's first select the inner, because we mentioned now this will grow um, to just keep growing and growing and growing. And you can see the width goes the whole size of the page regardless. Well, we want that top menu to wrap um, inside of a wrapper. So let me just first chuck this in so this image isn't ridiculously large for the moment. Just chuck that in. Uh, with auto. So it's a bit more realistic to see now. So you can see this menu is coming right out to the corner, even though the grid's clearly stopping here. So as you're doing that, that's obviously wrong. And that's because uh, we put in this div to wrap to the size of this grid, uh, which is again, the fabric grid that we've got. So we want to wrap the first div. So we'll first select the the wrapper, if you will, which is basically the first div, and that's how you make selections to it. And we've already got a class built into the Fabric Engine again, uh, which is a class called Grid Wrapper. So we can just do the extend SAS function, which simply makes this class copy all the content of another class, and that class is Grid Wrapper. So if we did that, and now expand, you can see now our menu is staying within the grids area. And to make it really obvious, you could just chuck a background color of red in to see. You can see there's the, the wrapper area and it's staying within the grids area. And if you wanna see this grid wrapper, you know, what's this grid wrapper doing? Press control, shift and F for find and just type in grid dash wrapper and press enter. Um, and you can see it's inside of uh, this class here, the grid, the DNA fabric grid styles, and it's a grid wrapper. And all it's doing is making the padding uh, to be matching the grid column padding and the max width to be the grid max width. So we could just simply say max width is this and get the grid, the, the fabric grid max width value, uh, which is in the settings. And that's simply the max width of this grid layout. Um, but because there's no real harm in all the other values inside the grid, we simply extend the grid wrapper. So we can say make menu wrap to grid max width. And that'll keep our menu styled the same width as you know everything else that in the website, which is gonna wrap to this grid. So we've got the overall width there. Um, then we want to, um, we also need a padding. You can see how this is right to the top, uh, you know, right to the top of the page. So inside of, um, we'll do it on the main top menu content. You could do it inside the div as well, but we can do it inside the main content. Uh, you can say add top bottom padding. Um, and to do that, you can do some padding. And really we want to start specifying um, some variables. So because this menu is gonna be usable as a module, if you will, that can be dumped into any website and changed. Instead of simply typing a fixed padding, we'll just dump a variable up here for now, and then this will move into the, the Fabrics Engine system later. Um, and we will say, uh, top menu, uh, what will I have? Standard padding, I guess, because this is gonna be a top menu and the style is gonna be standard and we're calling it padding. So the top menu standard padding we'll make use of, again, the Fabric Engine's base spacing system, which is uh, spacing normal. And then the padding here will be this value. So this is the, uh, basically, top menus, top bottom padding. And again, by making use of the existing spacing system in the Fabric uh, template engine, then the, it keeps everything proportional and aesthetically nice. So you can see now we've got this spacing here from top to bottom, which actually matches the spacing here between the 
um, each grid element. So because we're going to use that throughout the site, it will make everything stay proportionally spaced out the same, and that will give a nice professional feel uh, and a very aesthetic appearance. So we've added the padding there. You'll also notice because we have um, this fixed above, all the contents below, you know, that you can't see. So there's some content here. So once we've styled the grid, uh, or rather styled the whole top menu and we have the overall height, we'll then add a padding to any element that comes after to push it below the menu. But we won't do that until we've kind of finished styling everything. Um, so I'll just have to remember to come back to that. So we'll move on now. Let's just delete this temporary image thing here. And let's fix this image up. So inside the div, because it goes in the nav, then in the div, and now it's this image. We'll style the image next. So it's directly inside the div, and it's an image. And here we want to um, have a height, which is basically what we just specified. We have a height, but instead of typing it directly again, we will make a variable. So we'll say uh, logo height. And we'll simply do top menu standard um, logo height. And that will be, uh, we'll do uh, spacing, probably largest. Um, I think that might be enough. Should be enough. We'll see. And then again, the reason we're sizing everything based on these spacings is again for the aesthetics. So instead of just putting random values, uh, if you keep everything based off this spacing size and it's proportional to it, then like I say, what you'll find is naturally things just look right. The sizes end up looking correct. Um, make the width auto so it scales based on the size of the height. And you can see there's the number six now. And again, once you start looking at that, you can see that then icon compared to like say the text height, it kind of matches nicely. It just generally looks right. Um, and that is because of following this uh, standard spacing. So here we will set, set image size. Um, and we can also do something cool. Uh, so on hover of this, we want to kind of do something. So we can put a shake animation. And again, built into this fabric uh, template, we have uh, I've started just one. I've started to make animations. So if you look in the SAS and you want to know how it's done, then it's quite simply here. So I've just made a class called Shake. And on Hover, when you hover over anything with a class of Shake, it'll start the animation called Shake that'll last for 0.82 seconds. And it'll do a cubic busy, uh, which is basically the, the speed at which it does the animation um, in a certain pattern. Um, and we, we do a translate of zero to keep it fixed. And then we just do these keyframes. So this is basic CSS animations, which we'll do another video on. Uh, but for now, you can already make use of this existing one if you like. And then again, like I say, I'll do videos on CSS animations. But this is just a cool one, so we'll chuck this in. So for the image, so you don't have to go in here and go image class equals shake, which I'm, like I'm saying, you want to avoid as much as possible. Uh, you do, because then if you want to change the class, you're going to have to go back to the HTML. I prefer to try and make the HTML rock solid that needs no editing and any changes you need then can happen in the CSS. If you start going, well, I want this icon to shake and I put a class in here, shake, but then I've styled everything else in here, you've got, you aren't really separating your concerns. And it's, it's very hard in the web to separate your concerns because HTML and the CSS are very tightly joined anyway. You know, this structure is now very hard coded with this structure, but the best we can do at least is to start with a top level class and then as much as possible simply work on the hard structure so this keeps as clean as possible so long story short you could just put class equal shake on this image and it would shake but the same thing in the sas file is to do the extend like we've done here so if we simply then say uh, extend dot shake it will do the same thing it will add the shake class to this image for the most part. It won't technically add the class name shake, but what it'll do is now this style will have all the properties of this shake class. So it's exactly the same thing. But now at any point we wanted to change it, we can just change it here. So now if we go to here, you can see when we hover, we get this nice shake effect. It's just a little visual nicety. So on the website, they're scrolling through and they happen to hover and they're like, oh, that's, you know, it just looks a, just that little thing that I think looks nice on this particular website because I'm going for a kind of, 
uh, you can see kind of an organic uh, DNA evolving number six. So it kind of goes with that, that it's got some motion in it. So make it shake on hover. Uh, we've set the size up there. Um, and then I think that's it for now. Um, one thing we'll do, because this will start animating, uh, when you scroll down, we'll want to reduce the size of the um, the icon and things. We will want this to animate smoothly. So to do, uh, or rather it's called transitioning. Transition smoothly. So we'll come back to this, but I'll put a note so I don't forget. Um, and I think we'll also want to do that on the top level one here, the main menu, because that will be shrinking its probably padding maybe. So I'll put some little to do so I don't forget, otherwise I'll I'll end up forgetting to do that. So now we've got this image uh, styled there. Um, I think that's all we need. That's That looks fine and goes everywhere it needs for now. So we've done the image. So this will be the logo. Now we'll move on to this menu list, uh, which is here. So we'll start with menu items. And uh, here, because we have a div, then an image, then a div, then a UL, um, it kind of makes it a bit easier. Uh, so, I mean, we could, uh, we can select this one with UL. Um, so I think we will do, uh, yeah, let's move on to this UL first. So to select this, then we'll do the UL. So we are inside the div and then we want the UL. So this will select the menu list there. Uh, now we want to, first we want to remove all the UL styling to get rid of the, the natural indent that we've got here and the, the bullet icons and everything else like that. Um, and then we will want to um, float all of these to the left so they go in line. So instead of going down, they go horizontally across. Now again, I've done that if we take a look at um, the SAS folder fabric layout and then menus. And I've made a, uh, a horizontal menu, uh, which is the one we will extend. And this extends horizontal. So we'll take a look at horizontal, which is in lists. So the first thing in order to clear all the styles um, on uh, this list, we basically have to set the list style to outside non non, it's like a blanking thing remove the padding, remove the margin, and make each item inline block. So instead of them being block items on a line on their own, inline block sets them like text is. So again, I explained this in a previous video, uh, but this will blank off, basically turn an unordered, unordered list, remove all styling, and each item in the list simply turn into an inline block. So that means each one of these will simply flow across. So if we were to just copy and paste this in for now, um, and show you one line at a time what happens, uh, then you'll get a feel for what's going on. So if we were to comment this, comment this, comment this, and let's make the background red again, just so you can see. And we start with just the background being red first, so you can see where this UL is. So you can see by default, this UL has got padding on, margin on the right, margin on the left, margin top, margin bottom, going around it. Um, so first, if we bar remove the list, which should get rid of these bullets, and then remove them bullets, so it doesn't show anything, but it hasn't got rid of the padding or the margin inside the list items. It also hasn't got rid of the, the padding or margin outside. So if we remove the padding, you won't see much. You'll see that go, which is the padding uh, where it pushes the list items in. The margin should then remove the outer ones, which are then top and bottom. Uh, so actually what you're seeing here is, uh, there we go, The what you're seeing this edge here, uh, if we inspect, if you're wondering where it is, then you can simply see as you click the top menu, we've put padding around um, to bring it in. That's that padding we were talking about. So we brought that menu in naturally, uh, which saying that, do we want to pad all around? I think so, because it just makes it nice and yeah, in line. So that's our padding around there. Uh, but if we were to turn this color 
uh, blue say see there's our padding you remove the padding um, and there's the background so you can see that kind of nicely basically we've removed all the padding as the, the bottom line there we've got rid of the padding and the margin around the the ul and now it's it's forming right around uh, and then each item we make inline list and then you can see they all basically flow one after the other um, so by doing this style uh, it just turns a, an unordered list that goes down with bullet points into a straightforward kind of one after the other list uh, in horizontal order and this is how you do it. this is just a, a basic way of blanking out an unordered list so instead of having to type that in there because i've made it a built-in class called horizontal uh, we can just do the at extend horizontal and you can see the oh, dot don't forget the dot uh, you can see the point of this fabric template stuff is so that you can do nice quick things like this it, it gives you helper classes but the helper classes are nice and clean and short and you can always go and simply find them in this you know system so you're not just going well i don't know what that does or why it's a simple thing that there's a lot of standard things you do in HTML and CSS like this to blank out a list and turn it horizontal um, that you just don't want to keep repeating yourself. So it adds these basic classes to it. So turn UL into horizontal uh, list. Uh, and that's the first bit. Then the next thing you saw was actually a horizontal menu. I've, I've gone from a list to a kind of a menu style. And that's the next class up I did. So we made a horizontal uh, list like this. And then all we had to do uh, was inside of the list items, uh, we would change uh, the any anchors within them, because that's typically what you do in a menu. You have an unordered list, a list item, and then an anchor to click. So it, it's expecting this style of HTML to work. Um, and then inside of each of those, uh, we set the font size large, the font weight, the padding. Um, so again, what we'll do, we'll copy all this and we'll do it one line at a time so you can see what's going on. So we go into here, we extend and we start with, uh, so the line height um, is basically because if you want to do some uh, vertical alignment, you, one of the tricks is to set the line height to a specific size to make it central. So this is kind of like a reset in case the user explicitly sets a line height. So on this example, you won't see anything change. So we just delete that for now. It doesn't really matter. But in the, the core system, I've added that. Uh, the transition will come back to. Um, that's, again, the... Well, the transition is basically a, if you change the size from one thing to another... This makes an animation between those things. So by doing a transition on the padding and the color, like we've done here, and using this value transition normal, which again is simply in um, the settings, I believe, of the fabric template engine, uh, we have basically like 0 0.7 seconds and ease as the output. So this ends up boiling down to transition 0.7 seconds ease and color 0 0.7 seconds ease it's just that they're stored in variables um, and by adding this it means that if we change the padding or the color on these items that they'll fade nicely um, so you can already see the anchors already fade so that color's fading nicely um, and then the padding if you were to change you'd see animate so you won't see that yet because we're not changing so let's delete that um, so the first thing we do, we can comment out the others. These are all nice, simple CSS edits. So you'll see it come together um, in a nice order. So we start with nothing. The first thing we do is change uh, the font size. Now, we haven't put this inside of the list item, which we should. So we can select the list item and then the anchor. Mustn't have copy and pasted it correctly. So you can see there now we make the font bigger first, which is one thing we want. We make the font weight light so it's not thick. So it's now gone thin, all simple stuff. We make the padding around each item, you know, the gap around all these. Uh, the top and bottom small, so you get a small padding top and bottom. 
and the left and right to the normal size. So we'll add some padding around like this to space them out nicely. Um, and then for each item, if we then make the background red, you'll see there's the background. Um, if we were then to also make this unordered list background blue, so you can see that, you'll see that basically there's your unordered list. It's not really expanding. We do height, say 200 pixels. So you can see that this is how it's currently laying out, is that it's it's flowing inline block and that the unordered list is not taking into account the padding on the list items. So if you change the display of a list item, or rather the anchor inside of the list item to a list item itself, it fixes that kind of positioning issue um, and moves them inside. So again, this is just simply a thing you'll learn in CSS. Um, and this is one of the, uh, the main annoyances, if you will, of CSS, I find that a lot of this is just, you get used to it. You build items, you build some values um, in CSS and HTML, and you figure out the best way of doing things. And it's mostly trial and error. You understand most things, but then you'll trial different things and see what your results end up with. And that's why, again, I keep going back to like why I've made this fabric template stuff is so you don't have to remember all this stuff. You can see how it's done and you can build it up as you go and you'll learn this knowledge yourself. But in the meantime, then once you've made it once and you've made this kind of menu, you'll make say two, three more websites and you'll change styles and do things. Then you'll have forgotten how you made this, this top menu and you'll basically remake it again, doing the same procedure. You'll kind of figure out where you're going, you'll dump things in, you'll see what works. And it's that kind of repeat behavior that instead of having to constantly repeat yourself, um, you can just simply then make use of the underlying classes in this template system. But the difference with this is I keep this super clean as I keep mentioning. So um, all the existing web templating systems out there are so overloaded. They've got so much in, they use third party um, things inside them. There's hundreds of files, there's uh, hundreds of dependencies. You know, they're really messy and clustered. So this is more of a, you know, developer's kit, if you will, people that really want to stay close to the code and not have anything else in it that's needed. Um, and this is all that's needed to make a menu and that's all that will be in there. So um, again, I guess I keep coming back to, uh, if you don't necessarily understand this, because this is your first delve into the, the CSS world, um, it doesn't really change. Unfortunately, this is kind of how it works. You'll get used to knowing what padding does and font weight and font size from plain. Um, but then you'll just build this up kind of, well, at least this is how I work. I build it up as I'm going like this step by step. I know this wants spacing around, so I'll chuck the spacing. We've still got to align this over to the right yet, but I do it in kind of steps. I know the font wants to be bigger, so I'll make it bigger. I know it wants to be lighter, so I'll make it lighter. Put the padding around. I literally just work in steps. Uh, the next step is I want this color to be white. So we change it to the color theme white there. And then by setting the color, you've overridden the original hover effect of the links like this one's got. So then we have to set the hover effect to then color two in the theme. So when you hover, it now goes to that color. So you can see I'm just building it up in chunks. Um, in order then for all this to do that, we kind of now have a menu. So if we uh, set the background to red again, so you can see the background, you've got your menu there, um, you have the you know that the menu is now spanning the full width and everything's left aligned uh, but it looks like a menu so that's kind of getting getting to the point of what i would call just basically a horizontal menu to me that's a fixed style that's kind of a nice theme it's it's big writing it's links and it looks like basically a, a standard horizontal menu that you can use in any website so that's why then at this point i chose to turn all this little bit of style, this ally style here, um, into the other class, uh, which we called, uh, I'll put in the menus file, um, and I called it the horizontal menu. So again, all those styles are baked in now, so we can make use of that without having to repeat ourselves. And we'll also then, or rather, instead of extending the horizontal class, because this horizontal menu already extends horizontal class. You just have to now extend horizontal menu instead. So we'll just do horizontal dash menu. 
and we'll find now, as long as that didn't give any errors, yeah, it's fine, um, that we have uh, the horizontal menu style. You know, the generic one that we can use in any other part of the website uh, is the point. Um, so we've now got a horizontal menu, not a horizontal list. And the next fix is we want this menu to be over to the right. So a simple way of doing that is a value called float, which you don't want to use often because it takes things out of the general alignment of the HTML. But in this case, it fits ideal. So float menu to the right. And if you save that, you'll see the menu's jumped over to the right, uh, which is you know where we want it. So that's gone over to the right. Uh, in fact, if I just enable developer tools a minute, responsive design, then I can now kind of drag this size around so we can see there's the size of the menu, um, which works for the top menu, you know, the appearance that we want for the top menu. Um, so we will have, uh, what else is there? Uh, I'm just trying to think why this would not be, we want to get this up here, don't we? Let's have a quick look at the structure. Uh, I think what's stopping this is, yeah, we've got this menu icon, which is taking up the full width right now as well. Uh, otherwise, this menu, with it being floated, when it's floating right, it should just bump up wherever it can fit, which should fit in that gap. So because we've got this menu icon, at the moment, taking up the full width. I think we'll just jump back and let's fix this uh, hamburger menu, if you will. So let's go backwards a minute. We've got the logo, we've got the menu item. So in the middle, we'll just put in here the menu icon. Uh, now this is why I ended up, uh, when I did this, putting a class on here. Uh, we can remove this class. So let's just go ahead and remove the class. Um, because we could have then just selected it in style here by just doing dot menu icon. But again, as I mentioned, you want to keep the classes as small as possible. So what we'll do here instead is select the uh, the div that comes after the image. So we can do um, basically the image with plus div. And again, that should now select, if we make it invisible, uh, the hamburger menu. There you go, the hamburger menu is gone. You can also see from that then, this is now floated to the top. And then basically once it can't fit in, it jumps below, which we won't care about because once we get that low, we're gonna turn this menu into um, the hamburger menu. So we're gonna add some responsiveness, but now there's the overall you know, menu starting to look very close to, to what we want it to be. So let's just fix this menu icon in that case. Um, so. The menu icon, we want to be, I guess, hidden by default. So at the, you know, regularly it's it's not shown. Uh, so I've got a class again, which you can just extend uh, called hidden. And again, if you want to see what that is, control shift find type dot hidden and go to the class. And it just simply says display none. So it's as simple as you could type just display none, uh, but I just do hidden because I've got the class there just to, it, it's a bit more explanatory. You know, when you're, you're looking at the code, again, it, it says hidden, it's kind of obvious it's gonna hide it. Uh, so I know it's a bit weird having a class for a single element that you could simply type display none instead, but I just prefer the look of it saying hidden. And then at any point in the whole system, we ended up deciding to change how we hide items. It's in one place instead of having to go and change everywhere where we write display none. So by default, it's hidden, which is what we did already anyway. Um, and then what we want to do is bring this menu in uh, when the, um, the hmm, how should we do this? We want it to be when we are below, say, laptop in terms of size. So to do the responsiveness, again, we saw in the responsive video, all you're doing really is making a media query. So you're saying, uh, you know, at media, blah, 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 and doing your, your specific media query. Uh, the Fabric template engine's got a helper built in. So all we have to do whenever we want to do certain things at certain sizes uh, of a screen 
uh, as we do, um, I can do, uh, well, in fact, I've got a helper for that as well. But basically, uh, you would do the at include media, which is my helper mixing in this version. And then we've got specific breakpoints. So if you want to look at breakpoint, uh, you could do dollar breakpoint. And you'll see then, um, where is the breakpoints? Easier to just look for them here. So SAS base breakpoints. Uh, and you can see we have these values defined. And this is baked into this whole template system. So the website's expected to have these specific points at which it changes its style. We're classing anything above a thousand pixels as a desktop, anything below a thousand as a laptop, anything below 900, uh, sorry, anything uh, between 600 and 900 as a tablet, and anything below 600 we're saying as a mobile. So you've got four kind of breakpoints of yours, which is these, which you can reference. Um, and then you've also got um, things that are below. So below desktop, effectively, that would be mobile, tablet, and laptop. And below laptop would be mobile and tablet. And then anything below tablet is simply going to be mobile. So you can make use of all these breakpoints um, to do you know what you need to do. And you could do here then media and specify a breakpoint. So you could say media uh, breakpoint would be, uh, we want to show this when it's below laptop. So you could do this, include media below laptop. And then we could have um, display as block. And then that is now showing, um, apparently that's below a laptop. So let's just make this big and go larger. And there you see it's disappeared there. And when we hit below a thousand pixels, or rather below 900 for below laptop, then the menu appears. So we've got the breakpoint. I think that's maybe, yeah, I'd say that's about right. Because if we look at the blog, it's getting close to the writing. If we were to go to the next breakpoint, which is 600, then it's way too small, we'd be down here. So the point at which you want to bring in the hamburger menu is, is there, right about there, which is the 900. So we've brought it in at the right time. Um, we've made the uh, style just say when it's below laptop, when below laptop, you know, show block. Uh, again, because showing and hiding at certain breakpoints is, is fairly common, um, I've made a uh, fairly uh, useful little class already that you can make use of. Um, so all you need to do for to replace all this, which is doing just exactly what you're seeing here, uh, we can do an extend again for a class. This time we want to include the this below laptop value, uh, which is just the text below dash lap, but in case it changes, it's in a variable. We want to make use of that variable instead. Um, and basically it's going to say where extend dot below lap show block, which is just a class I've made. If we save that, that should have the same effect. And when we're above the laptop, uh, then it goes away. So we've got the same thing happening. It's just that it's in a class. But because this value is in a variable, in case we change that name or in case you decide to change that name, you replace the below lap part of the name uh, with basically hash and then two curly brackets. And inside there, place the variable name. And this bit here gets replaced with the actual variable itself, the breakpoint below laptop, which if you do control shift find, uh, or rather again, that's easy to see, just go to the breakpoints class. Uh, it's this breakpoint below laptop. So it's gonna be below lap. So for that, we save, we get exactly the same thing again, nothing changes, uh, but then we get the menu showing at the right breakpoint. So when below laptop, show. And uh, that's that bit. Um, we also then want to, similarly to the this menu, we want to float it to the right. So float to the right. 
and you'll now see it's up here. Uh, so then we want to, when we're below the laptop, uh, we want to then eventually hide this and move it off, but we'll do that after. So we've floated it to the right. Um, you also want to make it bigger. So I think that's basically a bit small at the minute. We adjust that. I think this, this is just a bit small compared to that. So we'll make the font bigger. And because this is an icon in a, a vector format in a font file, it, it changes size by the font size. So we'll do font size and then use the variable again built into the template system so it all stays proportional. Uh, and we will do font large or try larger maybe. There we go. That's nice and big for a menu then. So it looks better. Um, got the font larger. Um, we will now also tweak the padding because that padding's got a little bit more there than it has above due to the standard padding. So if we inspect the item, uh, where's the padding? Hmm. Well, rather, it's not got the padding as such. It's the, this has already got padding that pushes it out. So we just want to change this padding basically to look more in, in line. So make padding same all round. Uh, so for this, we will do uh, spacing small. And then we've added the padding there to push it out, kind of to look in line, if you will, to look better where, you know, the position wise. So I think that padding looks better than before, kind of keeps it, like I say, in the, the correct spacing. Um, and then we we can fix, you can't see here as such, but I tend to get really annoyed by visual lines and this font, with it being an icon, it's not actually on the baseline of a font file. So if we just then do vertical align middle and then save, you should see this slightly tweak. I oh, know it hasn't, maybe it is. Oh yeah, it is, so look, there's top and bottom. So that shouldn't be required. Yeah, so I think that position wise, um, that isn't too bad. Menu color, we want to change. So we don't want it being that color again. So let's just change the anchor within the menu, which is the hamburger. And we will have, again, to do transition nicely. We want to come to doing the animations nice and smooth. Uh, we'll have the color as color six as the white again. So, uh, general bright color. We'll have the, um, well, that, yeah, we want the hover effect. Uh, we have, in order to, what I want to do when we hover over this as well, is I want to grow this menu. So, because by default this is inline, not an inline block, uh, Inline is, as we say, like individual text. Like as you type this writing, each character here is an inline item. An inline block, it's got its own kind of group around it. These are inline blocks. So you can add padding to them. You can add margin spacing. You can scale them. Inline, as opposed to inline block, they can't be changed. You know, they can't have padding around them individually. So we'll make it an inline block, which I'm wondering whether changes the... All right, there we go. So change to inline block so we can scale. And then we will have um, on hover, we will change the color to um, color two, the pinky color. Right, hover color. And now we get the nice color there. And this is where we now want to grow. So uh, grow when we hover. And to do that, we can just do transform uh, 
scale 130% on the X and Y axis. And now when we hover, the menu grows. And if you see, if we remove the display inline block, that it won't grow because it's inline. So that's why you had the inline block because it allows scaling. Um, you will also tell we actually need to uh, make sure the transform origin is 50%, 50%. Which means where it scales from is the center as opposed to the top left corner. So if we were to scale it by, say, three times the size, so it's a bit more dramatic and remove this position. As we scale, oh, by default, this one's actually central anyway. But sometimes the origin might not be there. So if we set the origin to 0, 0, you'd see that it would grow from the top left. So instead of leaving it up to the browser to decide, we explicitly tell it that we want to transform from the center. And then we want to transform by, you know, 30%. And there's that. Now this is where we want to start adding transitions so things look smoother. So right now that is just an instant grow. So here where we do the transition, in order for it to smoothly transition between them, you type transition, uh, and then you specify the properties that you want to transition. So in this case, this will be the transform property. So I'll type transform, and then you can type and say 0.7 seconds and save. And that will now grow nicely and shrink nicely. Uh, but instead of specifying, and then you can also specify type like ease. So it's it grows kind of gradually. Or you can specify like linear, so it's, a constant direct path of growth. You can see that doesn't speed up or slow down, whereas ease has more of a starts off slow, speeds up and slows down. So these are kind of your animation curves. So you have the property you want to animate, the time, and then the type. So because again, to keep the whole website looking the same and not have to retype 0.7 seconds and ease everywhere you go, I turn this into a, um, a variable. Uh, which again, if you just go to the base settings, you'll see them here. So I've just made a standard 0 0.7 and ease as a property called transition normal. So instead of doing 0 0.7 ease, I'll do dollar transition normal. That'll do the same thing, but now I can reuse this property to, to set all the animations to a similar thing. So transition smoothly. Uh, we have the bar, the hover, the color. Um, I think that is probably it for that button. I think it looks all right. So now we have, as it grows, it's gone. As it collapses, it's there. So on collapse, you want these to all hide. And again, we'll bring them in with JavaScript uh, to when you click this, it kind of grows in. Um, so for now, uh, we'll jump back to this menu and get this hidden. So the first thing we want to do then is basically when this goes below laptop, we want to hide all these, as we say. So let's start with that. And let's go to um, the menu items, which is here, which by default are always shown. Um, and then what we want to do is do an include media, which you mentioned before. So basically this is... Uh, going to be when below laptop and we'll do the dollar sign breakpoints and use that variable below laptop. So anything in here happens when below laptop. We'll start with the usual display none to first make sure we have it right. You can see it's then disappeared. So they show the hide, they show the hide. So we know we've got the selection right. So now in here, what we want to do. Uh, because each item, um, if we look at these, inspect, the way the, uh, in fact, no, they don't. I thought we floated these, I don't think we do. So we don't need to do anything there. Uh, we will want to, when they're small and they're shown, um, we would want them to be full width, so one per line. So, we want to make full width, so uh, width 100%, uh, or rather you can't do width 100% because they are, well, we might be able to, 
But instead, what I'm going to do is do uh, position absolute. So each item is going to be positioned. Um, oh, I'm going to know. I don't want to do it on. I'm doing the. Oh, yeah. So we are in the main. I'm thinking we're in each item. We're in the overall UL, the overall list. So start that again. Get me bearings. Um, let's turn the background to red so you can see. So right now, um, as we're growing and shrinking, uh, we have uh, this. You can see this positioning due to the grid layout and things and the style. It's it's not, you know, the position isn't right. So if we make the position absolute below the laptop, um, and then we do uh, the left and the right is zero, we'll effectively get 100% width now. So we drag this menu to 100% width. So when it's up there, it just floats to the right. Uh, oh, and that's the point. We need to remove that float. I mean, technically, we don't need to remove the float because the absolute positioning removes it, but it's it's nicer for the, the browser to lay out easier. So we remove the float, and then we position basically absolute from relative to where it would already be and make it 100% width and height. So it drops below, drops below the icons and we've made the width all the way across. Um, now we would want to, um, we really want this background to cover everything. So let's make the height, um, we'll do 2000%. If we do say 100% height, you might think to take up the whole page. But this height value is based on its parent, which is actually this menu above. So this height is exactly this height because the height's coming from the parent. So because the height's coming from the top menu, um, we want to just make it a really large value. So we can set it to a static uh, pixel size, but we can judge the proportion that your top menu should never be 20 times smaller than the page's height is basically the principle I'm basing it on. So if we did 2,000 percent height then in almost every situation on every device you can imagine that's going to fill the screen so that gives us kind of this overall uh fill the page basically with the background which we also don't have because um i've set this to red just to show you that but by default when we float we lose the background so when you do that add background back in that we lost from position absolute. So the background would then be the color one again to bring the background in. So there we have the background being brought back in. And then what we want now is for each of these items uh, to be um, shown on their own line. So let's select each item. Uh, and then in here, we should be able to do, uh, are we below the laptop? Yes, we are. Basically, um, under a width 100%. And then uh, text align center. And there we have um, a menu that's kind of how we want it to look. So when it collapses, you get this menu. When it's above, you get this menu. And obviously we'll hide and show this with JavaScript now. Uh, so we can do it by injecting a class directly, but we're getting there now. So uh, make 100% width. And then what we'll need to do in order to animate this in, by default, when it's below laptop, uh, we will hide off to the left. And we'll do that with a transform because that's hardware assisted. So it, it works better. We'll do minus 100% on the width and zero for the height. So we'll basically shift this off to the left. So if we did minus 50%, you'd see we're shifting it off. We're starting to shift it to, you know, that way. So minus 100% shifts it right the way off the page. So we know it's there and we know it looks right, but we simply shifted it off by default. And then what we're going to do in JavaScript is when we click this 
hamburger menu. So when we click this icon here, we want, we're going to add a class to this menu item list. Um, and we are going to then uh, style it based on that. So we'll simply be adding a class and removing a class from this list. Uh, so we did class equals, um, and then we did, we'll call it expanded, I guess, um, and saved. Again, this, this won't stay in, this will be injected by JavaScript. Uh, but then if we were to style uh, all of this based on that, um, we would want to, um, so below laptop, all this lot, transform there, hide off to the left, and show when it's got the expanded class. So we then do and col uh, and dot expanded. When it's expanded, we would change the transform to zero zero to bring it back in. So because we've got that class on, if we inspect this, we've got this class. If we were to change the name, you see it's disappeared. And then if we were to click the menu, it's brought back in. So again, we want to make this smooth. So uh, transition smoothly. And we'll do transition, um, the transform, I think it'll be. And then again, the transition uh, normal value. And I think uh, that should do. So now in here, if the JavaScript was to remove the class, you see it slides out. And we add the class back and it slides in. So that's how the menu will now react as soon as we add JavaScript to do it. But we can easily play with it by let's say, editing this. So you can see that the menu will slide off and the menu will slide in. So there's this menu kind of done. If we remove that class now, because we know that will work. Um, when we are out here and in there, that's all done. I think there's nothing wrong with that now. And then obviously this, this animation will happen now with JavaScript, which we'll do in the next video. Uh, but we now have a menu you know, almost done. Uh, the only other difference I'd have is um, when we scroll down, we want to kind of reduce this menu padding and, and size. So it just shrinks a little bit and doesn't take up as much space as soon as we start to scroll. So again, the scrolling action will do with JavaScript, but we can at least add the style um, to you know, the class. So we'll do that now. And what we will do is basically when we scroll below a certain point, we're going to add a class again to the overall top menu. Um, and we'll add a class called reduced, say. It can be any class you want. Um, and when we're then reduced, we want to style this differently. So now we've got the reduced class applied for now just to visually see. Um, let's do what we want to do. Um, so the first thing we will do um, is add, uh, scroll up. We have the menu itself. Uh, we've got all this here, we've got padding. So the padding's there and then and dot reduced. So when the menu reduces in size, uh, we will want to reduce the padding. So we'll take this padding and we'll say reduce padding. We've got top menu standard padding. So we'll have a new variable called top menu standard reduced padding. And then the user can tweak the value up here. Copy and paste this reduced padding. And we'll change that to um, small probably. And you can see then the padding is reduced. Uh, let's turn off this responsive mode. You see the padding's now reduced to what it was. So if we were to uh, uncomment that a minute, there's the original, which we have to stay just above. Uh, so that's how it looks without being reduced. And that's how it looks with being reduced. Um, again, you can see there's no animation there. So in here, where we've got to do transition smoothly. We'll add a transition for the padding and transition normal. 
And now when we edit the class, which is what would happen, this reduced would be removed. You can see it transitions nice and cleanly. So as we add it back and effectively scroll, it reduces down there. Uh, we will want to do a little bit more as well. We want the image to reduce in size. So as well as the padding, uh, we will then have, uh, we have to go back inside the div into the image again. So div image, uh, reduce image size, and the image height like here, copy and paste in. And we'll have the same thing, logo, uh, standard logo, um, or st standard reduced logo height. And from spacing largest, uh, we'll go to say just spacing larger maybe. Uh, and again, that will uh, just jump. So they animate, but the logo uh, just jumps. So we want to add the animation to the image, which we've got here to do transition. Uh, and that will be uh, transition um, height in this case, transition normal. And now when we change it to from reduced to full, it now grows nicely and then shrinks nicely. Uh, we also want this text, this text is a little bit large. Um, so I'd say we want to make uh, the text not as large as well. Um, reduce menu items font size. For that to be the div, then it would be the UL. Uh, then it would be um, the div, the UL, ally, and then the A. So get right down into the specific menu items. And that would be, I think we reduce the font size. Um, or do we do, no, I keep the font size, sorry, I reduce the padding. So reduce menu items, padding. I mean, you can reduce the font size if you want. I'll just shrink the padding down. Uh, and again, we'll have, uh, what did we have? We'll put this in to maybe spacing normal. No, that's more or less. That's more. So we will do um, small, say. There we go. And again, that is not, don't think that'll animate. Let's just see. So, oh yeah, it does. So there's the animation from full size down to like a smaller menu. Uh, the other one we've got to do is this icon. So uh, that's the smaller menu. And then the larger menu. So you can see the, we don't reduce the hamburger. So we might want to remove the padding on the hamburger as well. So same as we did with the item padding, reduce menu icon padding. And this is just all what you can start doing as you respond to you know the class being added. It's all pretty simple stuff. Uh, so that would be the, uh, the first div, then it was the image plus div selection. So it's basically the div that comes after the image. And then we reduce that padding to small as well. Um, which uh, I think will be enough. Or has that not changed? Um, let me just double check. In fact, that doesn't change anything because we only we already had small on there. So actually. That one's redundant. That's already got the correct padding in the first place. So that's that. That's the reduced and the grown. So I think now uh, we have all the CSS in place uh, to do this menu. 
And all you need to do is tie in the JavaScript that will effectively add that reduced style when we scroll. And when we click this, it would add uh, a class to here called expanded to show this menu. And that will tie in, you know, there. So this has been quite a, uh, I'd say complex um, start really to the web design because the top menu is typically the most complicated thing to do anyway. So we've kind of jumped in at the deep end um, and you've just really seen me doing this raw. So I know I've made this already, but I've pretty much just then remade it on the fly and kind of worked through. And you've seen just, this is how I work naturally. This is actually how I'd build this up is through kind of trial and error and doing it step by step. Um, so as all my videos, as we go on, uh, we'll explain more in depth, but the initial starting point is always a bit rough. You have to kind of just get going. You have to be chucked in at the deep end and, and just see how it's done, observe how I build it. And then as we move on to these other sections, uh, they'll come together really easily. You, you know, you'll find it very easy and you'll see, you know, oh, this is a div and this is why the padding works and this is how the floating works. But in order to get the, you know, the point across and the starting point, if you will, this menu, this is kind of the most complicated thing you'll do. So um, the only thing you can really take away from this video is you're struggling is that this is as hard as it gets. HTML and CSS don't get any harder. This is it. This is this is all that's involved. So if you can build the start menu, this top menu, you can build everything else on a website with ease. Um, so uh, hopefully it's been enough that you can understand the flow. I know it hasn't been nice, short and simple and structured and saying this is exactly, you know, how we do it and why we do it. You kind of just being shown how I put things together. But as I say, as we progress, this will become a lot more structured and you'll see how things are done and why they're done a certain way. And this will all make more sense, similar to the, the WPF videos. The more you do, the more you'll understand why. And then you can probably come back to this video when we finish the whole website and look at this one again, and it'll make a lot more sense as to why we did things. But like I say, there's nothing more uh, to HTML and CSS than this. And the next few videos after the JavaScript one, uh, on constructing all the content and the contact pages and all the rest are really basic in comparison to this. So hopefully this was useful. You'll also see, you know, you've got this menu then. Uh, if anything goes wrong and you, this doesn't look right or something you can't figure out, then all you need to do is go to your desktop, create a folder uh, called whatever, type in, if we just delete this, new folder type, DNA web, let it start up, and then just type new template fabric.modern1 and press enter twice. And that will then create all the folder structure, all the content, and you'll have the um, the website here showing, you know, everything working fully. So this is what we'll build up to. Um, but if, if this video, you know, and the code here doesn't seem to come together for you, you can always do that and then just inspect the contents here. And here's your source, here's the SAS all the styling, you know, it's all in there for you. So hopefully this video is useful. Um, and like I say, in the next video, we'll do um, the JavaScript that'll, you know, make this menu react um, and form effectively your, your final top menu you can now use. Um, and then once we want to reuse that in any web page, uh, it's as simple as then, say this wasn't in, and we deleted this out of here. So there's nothing in. You could then just type dollar dollar um, exclamation and then uh, fabric dot uh, top menu dot standard dollar dollar and save and it would inject the menu for you automatically. So you've you haven't had to do anything. You all you have to remember is to type in the the shorthand and then save the file. And this is how it will kind of progress as we make banners and contact pages and certain layouts that are standard, you'll be able to really quickly slap together the website by just doing a bunch of these live variable includes to just dump in really common uh, components almost, if you will, to the web, um, and then just tweak your actual content here to suit. Um, so any questions, uh, just post them in the video uh, and I'll get back to you. <laughs>